Aloha. Hope we are all well. So I'm just gonna sit down with my protein shake because I'm such a bodybuilder. Jokes. I literally very rarely eat drink protein shakes, but today is one of those days where I am. Now this is just gonna be purely a sit down video. It's a topic that I feel would be interesting to many based on previous content I've put out along these lines. And also based on the fact that it is November right now, and November marks a year since my last cycle of anabolic steroids. And when I say last, it was my fourth and last. I ran, I ran four cycles as an assisted athlete and then realised going forward that that wasn't for me. So I just thought it would be an interesting topic to go over and discuss kind of how the last year has been and my plans for going forward and whether I have any regrets or plans to use in the future. So my last cycle was five milligrams of Anavar daily. So 35 across the week, which relatively speaking, isn't a lot. A lot of females will run 10, so 70 across the week. And then when, when it comes to stacking in other compounds, for example, you'll hear maybe people running Primo and Anavar at the same time. And that starts to bring your overall anabolic usage up across the week. And that's when you might be even more inclined to run into issues with virilization. So virilization being masculinization. So you starting to basically, in layman's terms, slowly turn into a man. So for myself, and I've talked about this in a previous video, which is my most viewed video I've ever put out. So if you want to find that one, um, I'm trying to think when it was, but it got like 15,000 views and a lot of comments just about uh, virilization and why I stopped using them at the time um, a year later. And I'm about 12 weeks away from starting my next prep. So I suppose I was reflecting on, you know, have I grown enough? Would I have grown more if I'd carried on down that path? And obviously the answer is yes, probably. However, I still sound like a female. I stopped getting the side effects that I mentioned in my previous video. And no, I don't have any regrets. And I do think it's worth mentioning to any females who are considering going down that route that you can make the most progress as a female or as anyone. Sorry, I should I should specify the most progress that you will make, but definitely as a female because of our usage being so low to minimise realisation is training hard, training more frequently and eating your meals like I've made the most progress this last year and also just in general through coaching myself and doing what I feel is best for my body. I've made the most progress by just training more, training as hard as I can and just, you know, being mindful with my nutrition as well. And, you know, previously when I was assisted with anabolics, I didn't look anywhere near as good as I look now. But back then I was training a lot lower volume and yeah we were just pushing and pushing food to, to what I would consider to be too much and to the detriment of body composition whereas now I'm in a good spot with my food body composition is in a really good spot 12 weeks till I start prep and where I was having 19 kilos to lose in my last prep I'm currently 14 kilos above my stage weight and I don't anticipate gaining a lot more weight before prep starts so in a much better spot Obviously, I've not had any further issues with, you know, virilization anymore because I've stopped using. And, you know, like I say, I've covered it in a previous video. There are a multitude of side effects that we can experience as females that could be, you know, growing hair in places you don't want to grow it. Um, you know, like chin hair and all like places that males would typically grow hairs that females typically wouldn't. That can be the deepening of the voice, which is something that I experienced. And I would suggest, if you don't believe me, to go back and watch maybe my videos from sort of 2021 and you'll hear a difference in my voice, trust me, because you might not think that my voice is, is particularly deep or that it's got deeper, but it actually has. And I experienced that when I used Primo, generally. So the first time I used it, I, I experienced nothing much. And then the second time, I, I, when it was injectable rather than in pill form, which was my first cycle, when it was injectable, I experienced that, that, that voice cracking. And that is essentially, you know, your body going through the male equivalent of puberty. When you're putting that level of 
androgens in your system, male hormones, like you, you know, you're going through puberty essentially. Um, so you're going to start to experience the, the likes of what teenage boys would experience with the voice deepening and hair growing in places. And then for a lot of females, it's, it's the clitoral enlargement, which is horrendous. And obviously that's what for me was the, 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 the cutting off point where I was not prepared to go any further. And obviously I, I couldn't take too much. So it was the Primo where I noticed the side effects initially. And then I wanted to try one last cycle and think just a low dose Anavar and see if I can potentially get away with Anavar. And the answer was, no, you can't. After four weeks, it was like, nope, things are swelling again. I'm not prepared to continue with this. And it's, I've started to virilize now. And therefore when I take more anabolics, I'm going to virilize again and I'm going to continue to virilize. So that, that's why I decided it's not for me anymore. You know, I can continue to make progress within my bodybuilding without it. And for me as well, it's I've been reflecting on the fact that, you know, the, the coach who prepped me last, his goal was uh, for me to turn pro in 2025. And, you know, we were obviously, you know, we I, I signed up with him for help with using assistance. And that was the goal at the time, you know. And then once he prepped me, he looked at my physique and decided that I have the potential to go pro which is lovely and obviously that put the idea in my head and you know that was something that you know for me to sort of grow as much as I would need to for next year to prep then yeah continuing down that route would have been beneficial in the sense of a bodybuilding goal however you know am I am I now big enough to go pro next year I don't think so but have I maintained my femininity? Yes. And it's kind of looking at the bigger picture of life, like to get a, essentially what is a piece of cardboard to ruin my femininity for the rest of my life. You know, when in sort of five, 10 years time, I'm not even probably going to care about what I did within bodybuilding. It, it, it didn't, you know, it didn't sort of weigh up for me, you know, as much as that goal would be lovely. And also the fact is, and what I find is a lot of people just aren't prepared to be patient you know, like, could I still go pro? Yeah, I could actually, if, if I gave it another, another prep and another, uh, uh, another off season, another prep, then maybe yes, maybe. And even if not, it's really not the end of the world. Um, the point is that the potentials there from like a structural perspective, like without blowing smoke up my own ass, like I don't need to do that because he sort of did it for me and he's not the type of person that does that. Um, you know, the potentials there for me, it's just, you know, lacking size, which, you know, I would have had to push more for um, continuing down that route. However, you know, I don't think I've grown enough to warrant being big enough to be competitive enough in any pro qualifier next year. And that's OK. My plan is still to do pro qualifier next year. So, you know, I think when people say I'm doing a pro qualifier, it sounds like I'm, a, I'm attempting to turn pro, which is. It's not necessarily the case. That's just the natural route of progression within bodybuilding. So for me, you know, it's not about doing like the smaller sort of federations. And when I say smaller, I mean the ones that kind of are less competitive, hold less competitive meaning. Um, so like within the UK, we've got like the PCA, which is like a fairly, well, it is a high standard. And then obviously it's like the MPC. So we have two bros, which is like the pinnacle of, you know, competitive bodybuilding. Um, and that's the route that I look towards because that's meaningful. Um, you know, this will be my fourth season now. So, you know, I, I had fun in sort of like Fitex and stuff and um, lower level federations, shall we say. And now for me, it's not about going backwards. It's about still progressing forward. Um, I still intend to do a PCA show next year, despite the fact that my structure doesn't actually suit PCA very much. I don't have that really tiny cinched in waist, you know. Um, but the good thing about PCA in the posing is you can manipulate your physique to, you know, make your waist look smaller and things. Whereas two bros, it's very much you know, you're facing forward, you're, but I really do suit those those poses a lot better. And that's the route that I would ultimately still continue to go down, which is why I went assisted in the first place, because I was like, I'm going down the two bros route, I need to be a lot bigger. Um, and I still intend to follow that. So I will do PCA for the fun of it, because I feel like I got too wrapped up in doing the MPC two bros last time I prepped. And that was the only option for me at the time. It felt like I was being pushed down that route and like, let's turn you pro and, um, Therefore, like I only did one show because I was not in a position to do a pro qualifier last time round. Definitely didn't have the size. Whereas next year, I'd like to sort of see, and the goal will be be in a pro qualifier and see how I fare. Essentially, see how far off I am. Then I'll know for sure. Like, would I ever 
would I be able to give it another two year off season to then try in 2027 to turn pro potentially, you know, just because it would be a nice wrap up to my bodybuilding career to, to sort of reach that pinnacle. And if that doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But that's essentially where, like, you know, where I see my own bodybuilding journey going. Um, yeah, and I'm going to be doing that, you know, without without using anabolics in my off season. Now, when it comes to prep, and this is where the caveat comes in, like, and this is where I have to be honest, like, it's always about risk versus reward. So it's like, the reward for me is looking a certain way on stage cosmetically against other girls who will most certainly be using steroids. And um, so will I then look to utilise perhaps a very small dose of Anavar leading into my show? Probably, potentially, yes. And that's something that I did discuss with my previous coach and he agreed like, yes. And this is something I hate to admit, but you know, cosmetically, it does make a very big difference. Well, a, a noticeable difference when you are um, stage lean to then, you know, uh, go into it sort of naturally, so to speak. Um, but again, that's something I'll weigh up at the time. And it's always it's always about balancing risk versus reward. But essentially, for me, in an off-season setting as a female, I don't think the risk of using anabolics during an off-season is worth the reward when you can literally just eat well, train hard, progress your training, progress your food, um, and just get a lot out of that. I don't therefore feel that I need to run any kind of anabolic cycles in my off seasons. And when it comes to that, you know, once every two years running a short cycle in a prep setting, that will potentially be something that I consider. Um, you know, and I am an assisted athlete still. I will always be an assisted athlete. You can't stop taking steroids and then claim to be natural. I'm not natural because I used steroids for four cycles. I did two steroid cycles, uh, four steroid cycles over the course of two years. So I'm not natural. And I continue to daily use growth, growth hormone and metformin. Um, and the, this is obviously not contributing directly to muscular growth. But what it is doing is helping me to recover better, reduce inflammation, improve my body composition. So overall, it's giving me a better runway for training progression. Um, I'm able to train more because I can recover better, less inflammation, better body composition being held over a longer period of time. So I've got a bigger runway for progression in my off seasons through utilising those those two. So yeah, I'm still assisted essentially. And when it comes to fat loss phases, as I've covered before, you know, I'll, I'll be using, you know, non-natural fat burners such as Glen, Glenbuterol. Um, you know, whether or not I'd ever use T3 or T4 again is to be confirmed next year. Or we'll see how the prep goes. But yeah, there's other things I can use, obviously, um, that aren't anabolic that will greatly contribute towards my progression in the off season, which I do. And then when it comes to a prep setting, whether I will use anything um, more so than what I am now in terms of, you know, the risking of virilization will be up to risk versus reward, how the look is when I'm, you know, six weeks out, assessing when we get to four weeks out, whether I then put in a small low dose cycle just to bring about a cosmetic appearance, essentially. And that's something that I have to weigh up nearer the time. So I'm not claiming that I'm never going to take anything again. I don't think that's wise. And as you guys know, I am an assisted athlete, so it's always there at my disposal. So that's just a bit of honesty there, a little bit of clarity as well. And also, maybe it would be interesting to see if after such a long time off, because by the time I would then take something, I'd, it would be into sort of July, August next year. It would be almost two years off taking any anabolics. It would almost be interesting to see if I still virilized quickly or not. Just interesting to see, because there's lots of data and information out there about once you've virilized, that's it, and you'll continue to virilize every time you take something. But it would just be almost interesting to see. So that is something that I, I will cross that bridge when I come to it. But yeah, so far a year off from using anything and I won't be using anything for the off season still. No intention whatsoever to do so. Uh, happy with the progress I'm making and well, well comfortable with the fact that as a female in the off season, you don't need to be running cycles. You can make really good progress without risking your femininity uh, and potentially for like, you know, the very small short cycles in a prep. Um, that are there, especially as you're, you know, towards the end of a prep, especially you're running that risk of muscle loss. And that's also when you put in the the anavar or whatever it is, and therefore give yourself that that ability to be back into a more anabolic 
state. So yeah, that's not me saying you must use steroids in your, in your prep. That's just saying as an assisted athlete, if I was to use steroids, that would be when I would be much more likely to implement it rather than like running cycles throughout my off season, which is then contributing to me being more likely to keep virilizing and have worse side effects. When I think that, you know, in, a, in an off season setting, you're anabolic anyway, just from the, the, the being in the surplus. Um, so, you know, a lot more can be utilised in your off season to make progress where you don't need to use anabolics. And that's kind of the conclusion that I'm at at the moment. And I hope that makes sense to everyone. And if anyone has any questions or comments, absolutely feel free to ask. That's just kind of where I'm at with it all at the moment. Anyway, I just thought I'd give an update because I don't really cover PEDs anymore as such. I just feel like because I don't really hugely use them anymore and I'm only really talking anecdotally about growth hormone metformin bit of clenbuterol uh, there's not a lot else that I can talk about from like um, an anecdotal perspective so I don't but if anyone does ever want me to cover off anything just ask just drop me a line um, and I'm more than happy to discuss it so that's it that's it for this video yeah and I'll see you in the next one ciao for now